Fionn McCool. While the name Fionn McCool, or Finn McCool, might sound like a questionable Dungeons and Dragons character, Fionn is easily one of the most legendary heroes within Celtic mythology. Fionn and his band of warriors form an important part of Irish mythology, but Fionn is also responsible for some geographical features related to Scotland, and for creating the Isle of Man, according to folklore. Like many other tales of mythology and folklore, these stories have been twisted and altered for centuries, and it can be difficult to paint a clear picture of Fionn's life, but I will make an attempt. Fionn's father was a man named Cúl, who led a band of warriors known as the Fianna. Cúl was in love with a woman named Myrna, the daughter of a druid, and after the druid refused to give away Myrna to Cúl, the two eloped. The druid went and appealed to the High King of Ireland, who declared Cúl to be an outlaw. By the time Cúl was killed in battle, Myrna was already pregnant with his child. The man who killed Cool took over leadership of the Fianna, and Myrna's father disowned his daughter and ordered his people to burn her. The High King believed this to go too far, and so he placed Myrna under the protection of Cool's sister and her husband. There, Myrna gave birth to a boy, naming him Demna, although later he would earn the name Fian, meaning bright or white, after his hair turned prematurely white. Myrna left her son in the care of her sister-in-law, who raised the boy in secret in a nearby forest, and with the assistance of a warrior woman, they taught the boy how to hunt and fight. The son of Cool would certainly be hunted by Cool's enemies, and so as Fionn grew older, he attempted to serve under a number of kings in disguise, but each one realized his identity and sent him away. While still a boy, Fionn met with a druid poet named Finnegus and began to study under him, learning the ways of poetry and more scholarly pursuits. Finnegus for years had been trying to catch the salmon of knowledge, a fish that lived in a small pool of water surrounded by nine hazel trees. These hazel trees dropped nine hazelnuts into the pool, which the salmon ate, giving him all of the knowledge of the world. It was said that the first person to eat the salmon would gain all of its knowledge. While Fionn was studying under Finnegus, Finnegus managed to finally catch the salmon and left it with Fionn to cook it while he went away. Although Fionn did not eat any part of the fish, he had touched it with his thumb while it was cooking, burning himself. He put the thumb in his mouth while a drop of fish fat was on it, incidentally consuming part of the salmon. After telling this to Finnegus, Finnegus admitted that Fionn was meant to consume the fish. And so Fionn finished it, and from then on, whenever he bit his thumb, he could draw forth the knowledge of the world. After finishing his studying under Finnegus, Fionn went to the seat of the High King at Tara, and after informing the High King who he was, he was granted a seat at the right hand of the High King's own son. Additionally, the night of Samhain was soon approaching, a Gaelic festival celebrated with great feasts and drinking. Samhain was also a time when the doorways between the normal world and the other world were open, allowing the souls of the dead and other supernatural beings to cross into our world. For a number of years on the night of Samhain, an individual known as Aelin, one of the Tuatha Dé Danann, would come to Tara, lull all of the inhabitants to sleep, and proceed to burn Tara to the ground. The damage was never so great that Tara couldn't be rebuilt, but Aelin had a lasting enmity for the High King for some reason, and would continue to do this every Samhain. This Samhain, the High King asked if anyone present would rise to undertake the defense of Tara when Aelin came. The group present shifted in their seats and kept their heads down in embarrassment, with even the greatest champions there hesitant to confront Aelin. This is when Fionn rose, proclaiming that he will undertake the defense. Although everyone there wished him luck, they believed they were telling him goodbye, as they were sure he would be killed in the confrontation. Fionn went out alone onto the plain outside of Tara, with nothing but darkness and shrill wind surrounding him. 
Eventually, Aelin arrived, playing his harp to place everyone into a deep sleep. Fionn knew the music would put him to sleep as well, so he needed a way to stay awake. Depending on the version of the story, Fionn either inhaled the odors of a poisoned spear, or he placed the tip of a red-hot spear to his forehead. Aelin proceeded to attempt to breathe fire towards Tara, but it was blocked by Fionn. Aelin was understandably startled and confused by someone stopping his rampage, and continued to try to burn the figure. After seeing that he could not, Aelin fled, but he was not in his native world, and so he was sluggish. Fionn caught up to Aelin, and stabbed him with his spear, killing him. Upon returning to Tara after the group awakened, the High King asked Fionn what he wanted as a reward for slaying Aelin. Fionn responded by asking to be placed as the leader of the Fiona, just as his father was. The High King agreed, and so the man who had killed Fionn's father stepped down, and Fionn was now the head of the Fiona. The remainder of Fionn's life is filled with various tales and legends spread through folklore, ranging from more grounded stories to the most fantastical of myths. The myths generally revolve around portraying Fionn as a massive giant, capable of altering the landscape around him. It was said that he created the giant's causeway between Ireland and Scotland, so he could travel across without getting his feet wet. Another story says that he threw a piece of land at a rival, only for it to miss and land in the water, creating the Isle of Man. One of the most famous folklore stories regarding Fionn feature an encounter he has with another giant, named Ben and Donner. Ben and Donner lives in Scotland, and challenges Fionn to a fight by shouting across the water. Fionn creates the giant's causeway to go and confront Ben and Donner but upon seeing how massive he is, retreats back home. He goes to his wife for ideas, and she proceeds to disguise him as a baby, hiding him in a cradle. She then makes a batch of pancakes, hiding irons in some of them. Ben and Donner finally arrives to fight Fionn, but finds only his wife there, who tells him that Fionn is out and will be back soon. As Ben and Donner waits, Fionn's wife serves him some pancakes but when he bites into the iron, his teeth chip. Fionn's wife acts surprised, saying that her husband eats these easily. She then feeds one of the pancakes without the iron to Fionn, acting as a baby. This shocks Ben and Donner, and so he puts his finger into the baby's mouth to see how sharp his teeth are. Fionn bites down on Ben and Donner's finger, scaring the giant. Ben and Donner flees, terrified of how massive Fionn must be considering the size and toughness of his baby. In other versions of the story, Fionn just simply crosses the giant's causeway and pummels Ben and Donner. There are numerous accounts of Fionn's death, as is fitting for such a legendary hero. Some are as simple as him attempting to jump across a river in his old age and drowning, while others feature him dying in great battles or being betrayed by the Fiona. A well-known version of his death involves the Fianna going to war with a certain High King of Ireland, in which the Fianna were greatly outnumbered. Despite Fionn's legendary combat prowess, he along with nearly all of the Fianna were slain in the battle. Perhaps the most famous version of Fionn's end doesn't involve his death at all, however. It is said that Fionn is merely in a deep sleep in a cave on Ireland, and will someday awaken when Ireland is in a time of great need. Fionn McCool is certainly one of the most legendary figures in Irish mythology, and his popularity is perhaps in part to having a name like Finn McCool. The spread and alterations of folklore have done a lot of work to change Fionn from a relatively straightforward hero into a true mythological figure. It's interesting to note that within Irish mythology, the gods of the Tua de Danann have progressively grown smaller over time, becoming creatures like fairies, while human heroes such as Fionn have grown into giants. Regardless of whether you think of Fionn as a great human warrior or a tremendous giant, if you ever visit the giant's causeway, you might just be reminded of Fionn McCool.